Hi everyone, Jimmy here again, and welcome back to another video to the Intro to Durham University series. So today I'm going to be talking about the assessments and the grading system that we have here at Durham University, and also I'm going to show you some of my notes and also classwork as well. So at Durham we have two types of assessments. We have formative assessments and also summative assessments. Formatives are basically the practices of the summatives, and the summatives basically count towards the final grade of your year. During your time at Durham you may encounter several different types of formatives and summatives as well and these are essays, commentaries, dissertations, exams, oral exams, TLRP which is the target language research project for your year abroad if you're an MLAC student and also tests as well. For most of the written submissions you're going to have to use references from books or films or even the web pages that you find on your own these things are very important to getting a higher grade uh, for your research projects. If you're not used to doing research and things like that, don't worry too much about that because in your first year you're going to have a lot of practice on that, so just give it your best. As for your written exams, so sometimes we don't need to quote and reference for our exams in MLAC, but also sometimes they may state otherwise, so in that case you will have to memorise these references off by heart. As for oral exams, most of the time these will be 15 minutes long and that may include 5 minutes of presentation time and then 10 minutes of question time. So the university grading system is very different to anything that you've seen before and at first it might seem quite daunting and also you might have a very high expectation of yourself coming out of A-level or the equivalents. However, don't get too upset if you don't always get an 80 or 90% because these are very hard to come by as well unless you do an exceptional amount of work um, put into your projects. In order to fail your assessment, you'll have to achieve a 39% or below in that assessment. And then the class above that is known as the third class or third and that's anything 40% and above. And then you have the lower second class, which is known more commonly as A22, which is a 50% or above. And above that, you have the upper second class, which is the 60% or above. And finally, you have your first class, which is anything above a 70%. Most of the time, if you get 90%, it's almost publishable, so that's very, very hard to come by, although not impossible. However, I have to say, I don't put too much effort into most of the things, so I do just get an average grade overall. The lowest I've ever got is a 42%, which was quite embarrassing in my first year, and the highest I've ever got was only a 74%. So in my first year, I only got a 58% overall, which is only a 2-2, and it's not ideal if you want to search for jobs or internships over the summer. However, I was alright with it because I knew that I was enjoying myself as a first year university student so I didn't put too much of an effort into it. However, my second year I got a 62% overall and again I was quite happy with it because I did so much work around college as well so that's my excuse. When you do your assessments, you should be careful of a few things. Check your previous feedbacks and markings and things like that just so you can improve in your future assessments and also be aware of plagiarism and your submission dates and the way you present your projects and things like that so these are all very important and you should be able to find these details and information on your school handbook or the department handbook. If you do ever have any issues or problems with it, do contact a member of your department and let them know beforehand and early enough so they can actually help you out as early as possible. In terms of resources, you could be a bit creative with it. Not only can you use the books in the library and also web pages and things like that, do you think about news articles, you might want to think about referencing videos or paintings and things like that, but only use this to your advantage and not just put it into the essay or project for the sake of just using a reference. They don't like that. You, you should make your references as relevant as possible. Also you should use your Duo account as often as possible. There will be lecture slides and also revision notes and also other resources that they can link you to as well. If you do ever have to do a retake then you'll be asked to go back to Durham in August to complete your retakes in a normal exam environment. My advice is don't worry too much about making mistakes, especially in your first year, because you can use your first year as a formative year, so to test out and also experiment on your different writing styles and things like that. This is the standard looking handout that we get every lesson, and we 
basically work through the whole of the handout throughout the different days of the week. First of all, with an exercise like this, I do a list of vocab that I don't understand from the text and then translate them and then put them on the first page of the exercise and then start doing the answers to the questions after that. And I believe that is all for the assessment and also grading system at Durham University. If you do have any more questions, again, feel free to leave a comment below or contact me via my Instagram or Twitter. As usual, I'll link them in the descriptions below. Feel free to check out my playlists for the Intro to Durham University series and also the Live at Castle videos as well. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos about Durham and also my year abroad as well and also just maybe highlights videos. Thank you very much for your support and as usual, until next time. Languages ban my culture modules. Your mentor or academic advisor will be there to answer any other questions that you might have.